So the Kelly Ritchie Band, that has been a constant evolution. Uh, since it's a three piece, you know, a power trio, it really has been based on my evolution as a player. I used a keyboard player early on, on and off, maybe in the first couple of years. Uh, not that much, but I, I, I did use a keyboard player early on, and I, I enjoy playing with piano and B3 a lot. But 95% of my career with the Kelly Ritchie Band has been uh, with a bass player and a drummer. And I've had a lot of bass players and drummers because I've toured a lot. I've done approximately 4,000 shows, and I have driven now over a million miles. And I really have, because I've I have the truck mileage records and tax records to prove it. When I added that up, once it's like, wow, that's a lot of driving. So, you know, I've played all over the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia. I've done, you know, just a lot of touring and it's hard being on the road and it's hard traveling in close quarters. You know, just, there's, there's just a lot of challenges. It's being, you know, think about how exhausted you are when you come home from vacation. It's been one really long vacation. <laughs> so, you know, the earlier part of the Kelly Ritchie band was more blues-based rock. I've experimented, you know, a little bit more on the rock side, a little bit more on the blues side, woven back and forth. Um, but as of late, I am playing with uh, Cincinnati players. And in this region, I had a number of players out of Indianapolis for probably the span of 10 years. And uh, in 2013, I joined forces with Freak Bass. And he is just a world-class bass player, Lucy Collins' protege. And Freak was on my Sweet Spirit record. And he and Big Bam, who um, unfortunately was just passed, he was killed in a car wreck and it was tragic. Um, but he and Big Bam, I played and toured with them for a year and a half. And they were a fabulous rhythm section. And they brought that funk element. And you know, with every incarnation of myself, there's been some kind of impact. And they definitely had a major impact on me, because I'm very funky, I've got a strong right hand. That really opened me up a lot. And I met my current drummer through Freak Bass. His name's Toby Donahue. And Toby's done production for Bootsy Collins for like 15 years. And he's a DJ, he scratches. He was in a band called The Animal Crackers. And I heard that Toby was a drummer. I even heard he was good, but I'd never heard him play. And I was at a studio once he uh, mixed my live CD that I did with Freakin' Bam, Kelly Ritchie Band Live at the Blue Wisp. And that's when I really kind of, you know, spent some time with Toby and got to know him. And so I was at a studio and there was some drums there and I was like, okay, I heard you play, let me see what you got. And so he got behind the drums and he played. I was like, wow. He really had a bottom, aggressive feel, just real rock and roll, but that funk element too. And I was wanting to kind of transition a little bit from quantity to quality gigs on the road. And so I've been placing the last several years my focus more and more on festivals and then building up a solo acoustic and electric career uh, to offset some of the constant travel. And so I, I said to Toby, I said, would you join me this year? And uh, that was 2015. And I said, you know, would you, would you play just, you know, I've got like 25 shows. And he thought about it, he goes, you know, he goes, he goes, I will, he goes, I like what you're doing. He goes, I wanna have fun. And I said, I do too. And so we went in pursuit of a bass player and I found Rick Manning, who I'd heard about Rick. I had no idea the monster player that he was. And across the board, he can play anything. And he is such, uh, uh, I don't wanna say a bass player's bass player, but he really wants to support me and challenges me, yet is always there to catch me. So it's not any kind of an ego thing. He's really pushing me safely 
further and further and paying attention to what I do and coming, you know, say, hey, I heard you do this. I've got this idea. And so both of these guys, one, they love each other. I mean, they just lock. And I haven't, I've never had this much fun playing because we're really good friends. We laugh a lot. And uh, the three of us are very, very different. So when you see us on stage, Toby's, you know, playing a traditional kit, but he also scratches. So that brings in a whole new element. And then Rick is just the glue. And, you know, when Toby scratched a little bit on the live record on Sister's Got a Problem, we brought him on. It's like, well, now that's cool. And R.L. Burnside was a huge influence on me. And his grandson had taken, you know, R.L. was, you know, old school blues and his grandson took him and chopped recorded him chopped up the loops and just made it cool and so I, I said to Toby I said could you make me cool like that <laughs> and he laughed he goes yeah he goes actually I could and so I had the luxury because I'd started recording my Shakedown Soul record in the early part of 2015 and so half of it was in the can and when I started touring with Rick and Toby throughout the whole festival season I got to take that material on stage for the first time and you know normally you do a record and then it gets seasoned well this time a good half of the record I got to play on stage and I said Toby if you'd produce the record you know we'll record whatever re-record any of the tracks and so we ended up re-recording everything but uh, drums and bass on one song and uh, we kept some keys, you know, that had been laid down. And we didn't even see each other during the process. This fall, I was in my studio, Rick was in his, and Toby was in his. And we passed tracks back and forth, and we did the whole record that way. And Toby took it and mixed it, and it was like, whoa. Really brought some life and some fresh sounds. Because when I listened to the first half of the record that I'd recorded with Dwayne Lundy in Lexington, that's where I did Sweet Spirit, I loved, I loved Dwayne and I loved that environment. I went down and I recorded just bass and drums with one of my favorite drummers, Robbie Casenza. And it was, I really liked it, but it sounded like a Kelly Ritchie record. It didn't sound like my next step. It just sounded like a, you know, I, I like to think that I'm, I'm evolving. It sounded like a better, you know, like, you know, it keeps evolving, but I really wanted something fresh and Toby nailed it, you know? So now when we play, um, you know, there's absolutely no burnout factor because we're excited to get on stage. We haven't been, you know, killing ourselves on the road. We've been just really refreshed and ready to go and, uh, really looking forward to the gigs and a little bit of sparseness and uh, and I and in doing my solo stuff I'm constantly playing with uh, real cutting edge beats and loops and stuff that Toby's helped me put together the beats and I've got guitar loopers so it's like one big practicing to a metronome you know so my chops are just like as as just in my control as I've ever felt on a guitar. So to be able to walk on stage with a fresh perspective, really feeling on top of my game, and then playing with these guys and having fun, you know, the audience is noticing. They're like, man, I've never seen you so happy. So that's the Kelly Ritchie Band today. And we are supporting Shakedown Soul, which is uh, a blues rock record with a lot of new sounds. Mm -hmm.